Hello, Internet. So my wife and I have just bought a abandoned home in rural ugh, rural Japan, which happens to be full of pickling equipment, which is quite fortuitous because we used to have a small pickling business in America. So we're going to put some of that to work today, uh, making umeshu, which is a kind of liqueur made from the ume, which is a Japanese plum. So we've got these three crates full of pickles, uh, pickle jars, they all look about like that. That's pretty yucky. Those are some 10 year old pickles. Uh, you're welcome to try some if you'd like to come over and, vi and visit us here in Japan. But we're not going to use those because we don't have water hooked up and we don't have garbage. So we're going to start with these ones which are merely covered in snake skins. We're going to take these back to the house we're staying at and clean them up. And we're going to fill them with plums because it is plum season. So we're going to take a break from cleaning and we're gonna go get some plums in these jars. So here we are back at our friend's house where we're staying until our house is ready to move into. The pickle jars are all clean and dry. We're missing a lid for one of them, but that's okay because uh, Danny doesn't like plastic anyway. Um, and we're gonna be making some of this, umeshu, which is a plum wine. It's really an ume, which is a different species, but the ingredients are just uh, these plums, sugar, and alcohol. So it's a liqueur, and this is what they give you when you get plum wine at a, whatever those restaurants are called, Benihana. Um, so I've been foraging all day, and I've come up with some ume of my own. And I've also managed to find a big pile of loquats, uh, which are in season at this time of year. So I'm going to make another liqueur, which is called in Japanese, uh, biwashu. And just for comparison, I've gotten some store-bought uh, ume just to see how those differ. Now you'll notice these ones are yellow and these ones are green. So these ones are fully ripe and these ones are just starting to blush. And I have always heard that this is the, the stage that you want to make them at. Um, but I've, I've been ensured that these will be also turn out okay. Um, I did snack on one of these and they are really good. They're not sweet, but they have a great um, flavor and the smell is just heavenly and that is just gonna perfume the alcohol. So in addition to our fruits, we just have the aforementioned alcohol, which in Japanese is just called Hawaito Rika. So white liquor, obviously it's 35%. And this says on the side it's made from uh, sugar syrup. I think that just means uh, sugar cane. And on the side there, as you can see there, they're using the green green ume, more of uh, this type. And every Japanese family is gonna make this uh, every every spring when it's ume season. And that's what these, uh, that's why every family has these pickle jars. Not every Japanese family has 20 or 30 of these pickle jars uh, like our house came with, but nevertheless, these go for like seven or nine dollars at the grocery store. They're not really worth uh, keeping around, but we're the type of people who like to reuse stuff and fix it up. So we're gonna reuse this we found at our house. And then the other ingredient is uh, rock sugar, which looks like ice. Um, when you're making liqueurs, um, it's a pretty simple process, but people will tell you you should get it uh, dissolved fast. So you should get the sugar boiled and then put it with the, with the fruit. Um, in Japan, they're using giant blocks of sugar, which are gonna take forever to dissolve. Um, but anyway, it's a really simple process. Uh, I don't recommend doing this unless you have a scale, which we do not, but uh, you know, it's pretty simple ratios, and the scale is just uh, gonna enable you to replicate your results more than anything. So um, do as I say, not as I do. Our house came with three scales, and I just forgot to bring them. Um, anyway. So the ratio is gonna be one kilogram of fruit to 500 grams of rock sugar and then 1.8 liters of alcohol. So that's what each of these are. So I'm gonna go over what we're gonna to do to each little fruit. And the ume have a tedious process of, um, I already did that one. They have this little black spot and what you need to do is take a cocktail sword and just flick that out. And you need to do that for every single one, and I don't know why, but you have to do that. 
I've already done it here. And, and then with these uh, loquats, I'm just going to go through and clean them one more time. Uh, some of them have stems on them. Some of them are a little green, so I've got more than I need. And I'm going to get rid of the green ones. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Now here we have the three sisters all prepped. I forgot to mention one step which our friend recommended, which is that each of these has been thoroughly dried after they've been rinsing to prevent uh, the growth of mold, but with 35% alcohol, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, another thing is that the, the loquats turn brown very quickly after you cut them, so I would recommend leaving a bit of stem on when you pick them and then cutting them as close to the actual uh, dunking time as possible. And now we're going to magically add some sugar. So that's 500 grams of sugar eyeballed. And of course, each of these fruits varies in its sugar content, so the resulting liqueur is going to be slightly different. Uh, in its sweetness, but we're not going to worry about that. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but these fresh ume smell delicious. I can smell them from here. I can smell them through all that sugar. Um, and one thing is that the, uh, at least the side of the box says you're supposed to mix the sugar in, but who's got time for that? And uh, on to the alcohol. That's really all there is to it. Now we just have to wait two or three months. In the meantime, here's some of the store-bought stuff with some club soda, as I like to enjoy it. So thanks for watching, and uh, cheers, y'all.